Hey, morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success. It is Tuesday morning on episode number 214. I'm here in, back home in Studio 11, and uh, my good friend and co-host Matt Maddox is in uh, Palm Tree Studio down in St. Petersburg, Florida. We're glad to be back with you. Missed y'all. Long weekend. Awesome weekend. Mission 25, Washington, D.C., but we're home now. We're back in the hustle and back in the grind. Good to see you, my friend. How are, are you on this beautiful last Tuesday of October? Uh, doing awesome, man. Uh, right now I'm, uh, enjoying some gorgeous sunshine. Well, not really enjoying, I'm enjoying from a view here. Um, uh, probably not able to get out into it today like I want to. Uh, but anyways, it, hey, you know what? I'm blessed, dude. First of all, we're alive, man. If you don't wake up, yeah, I know you might be tired. I know you may not want to you know, get out of bed. But come on, the fact that we're alive, my friends, right. should right. immediately make us smile. No matter what, if you can learn how to wake up and smile, and, but smile about the fact that where, where has the wonder gone of I'm alive? You know, we're missing out. Sometimes, Mike, we, we get in this thing we call life, stress and life events and circumstances. They they cave us in. They They, they push us into this... And we lose the wonder, the, the wonder of the simple things. Like the other day, where was it? Uh, uh, Monday, we were in the Tampa airport and Caleb was in the restroom and I, and I was waiting outside for him. And when he walked out, I just smiled at him. I just looked in his eyes and I just smiled. I mean, we, and I don't want to lose the wonder of like, you know, like Mike, us just sitting at the coffee shop on uh, Sunday. You know, right. we'd spent the whole weekend together and, you know, I said, you know, let's just go down and let's have a tea or a coffee and you know, just that moment, you know, and the, the wonder of life, the wonder of uh, sometimes, Mike, we got to pause and just look at things and smile and think, you know what, I'm alive. I'm here. You know what? I'm healthy. I'm, I'm God is good. You know, and even waking up, I do that. I'm like, I'm awake. I'm alive. It's a new day, you know, and, right. and be grateful for that, my friends, because believe me. There's a lot of people that have lost their life and that are fighting for their life that would give anything to be in your shoes. Even Listen, there are people that are right now in a hospital that will never get out. Mike, right. we met people that lost their legs that will never walk again. Never, never. You know, next time, you know, you feel like, you know, feeling sorry for yourself or whatever, remind yourself that, you know what? I mean, there's a lot of people that with all of my stress and all of the pressure that I face, all the problems, they would give everything they have to be in my shoes just for a shot at life again. How right. many people that, you know, maybe suffered a, a, a tragedy and now they're they're in a wheelchair the rest of their life. They lost legs or they're they're in the hospital and will never get out because they're dying of cancer. Literally, the doctor looked at them and said, at best, you have two weeks to live. You know, Mike, they would give anything to be in our shoes, you know. Uh, in fact, what's kind of ironic is I read on Twitter here this morning, and I can't remember, you know, who it was, but it was a good tweet. It was someone that was a cancer survivor, and he said, one thing I've learned from living with cancer is to never take life for granted. This is our day where we focus on life coaching and motivation the opening thought for the day, my friends, as cliche as this is going to sound, don't take life for granted. Don't. Don't take anything for granted because life is so unpredictable here today, gone tomorrow. Look at the guy who was the uh, prospect for the Cardinals. I mean, 22 years old, died in a car accident this weekend with his <laughs> girlfriend. He had the wow. world on his shoulders, you know making millions, fame, celebrity, success, living his dream of playing baseball, forever gone. So don't take nothing for granted. That's why, Mike, I so believe that the secret to life is living in the moment. I so believe that the secret is now, the present moment of saying, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here now. I'm going to enjoy today. I'm going to, you know... Uh, celebrate everything that happens today. You know, all the little things I'm grateful for. So anyways, I'm grateful for you, my friend. We had a good time this weekend, did we not? We did. It was awesome. It was very good. Hey, um, 
checking my volume here. Yeah, I, I just I want to point out two things real quick. First of all, we're going to get into uh, uh, talking about energy and execution and stuff in life. Uh, just to let you know, low energy alert on Mike today. Okay, I don't have super high energy today. Just being transparent, but we're going to talk about that. The other thing I like, Britton said, and this is I, I just found this amusing because this is the only place like in the world that you would see someone say, can you turn Matt up, please? <laughs> it's the only place. The only place. And I'm going to tell the story on you. I'm going to tell the story on you quick, bro, if you don't mind. Saturday morning, we were, we were at like 5 o'clock in the morning. We were going to make breakfast burritos to take to the homeless in D.C. And we're sitting, and, and there's some issues. It's a missions trip, so stuff happens, and, you know, we have to adapt and, and overcome. And, and we're sitting in the hallway. And my friend Matt is on his speaker phone five in the morning, and, and Matt sort of has a voice that carries. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but uh, and he's like talking to the guy on the speaker phone, and this lady like opens the door and goes, "Will you shut up?" <laughs> so we had to be like, Shh, "Everybody, be quiet in the hall." That's what I. So I just thought it was funny that. No, I won't. I'm excited to be alive. You know, I'm excited. Yeah. But she looked violent, Mike. She looked violent. Let me tell you right now. There's nothing worse than a violent woman, my friends. Be aware of a violent yes. woman. I, I, I'd almost rather go through anything. She looked raging violent, Mike. I think you and I both were a little scared. I know I was. I was like, oh, yes, ma'am. I, I was. I was. I, I think the word violence is similar to contentious, so there's a proverb that says it's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a contentious woman. You want to stay away from contentious slash violent women. I'm, I'm totally in agreement with that, although Carol almost took her down. So it's all good, though. And that's um, what made me feel good. I knew I knew Carol was right around the corner. I thought, okay, if this girl comes at me, I'm safe. Because I know yeah, Carol's, Carol's gonna got your back. five feet behind me. And, you know, and there's not, Carol would have took her out like that. And you know what, what was funny is she came back out a second time. I think the lady was just having quite a, a situation. But um, anyway, she came back out screaming again. And we really weren't really truly being that loud. You know, we were, obviously we had a bunch of people getting ready to go out. You know, we were meeting in our tagging room. And uh, what's funny is the lady at the front desk was going to throw her out. She's like, what? She yeah. did what to y'all? She's like, what's her room number? She's like, I'll throw her right out of this hotel. So anyway, what was funny is she was, you know, you and I, Mike, were walking back down uh, the hall from getting something. And she was screaming again. And we saw Carol. And you and I just kind of stopped, and Caleb was like, "Dad, you know, uh, you know what we're." You know, of course, I'm, I'm I'm having fun with this. Caleb was like, "You know, how come you didn't try to stop it?" And like, I was kind of hoping to see Carol take her out. You know, of course, I say that in innocent fun here, my friends. Don't don't judge me, please. Right. You know, yeah, don't, Carol handled it with grace. Hate her. Don't think that I'm violent. Don't think that I'm abdicating, fighting, or bullying, because I'm not. Please don't read into it. Let me have a little fun here, great. my friend. Mike, isn't it sad we got to clarify everything nowadays? That's sad. Yeah, well, it's easy to misconstrue, misconstrue uh, communication. We should probably talk about that at some point. Um, today, hey, I want to just remind everybody, today is about life coaching and motivation. If you have questions, we'd love to field them. Of course, we always have questions that come in by email and text message. Uh, if you're on live today, great uh, advantages. You have access. You can ask the questions. We'll try to give those priority. You can click over there and type in the chat or where, wherever it is. If you're on a, a mobile or a tablet, I'm not sure you know which corner of your screen it's in, but type that chat. There's also a question submission box that you can submit questions. You can also email us, mike at mathematics.com. Or text it in to 727 or 9 and we'd be glad to field those questions for you. Um, so, that being said, hey, I want to I ask this question first of all, Matt, and I gave everybody a warning. Look, I'm low energy today, um, relatively low energy, and sometimes, you know, there's cycles of life. We all have life things that happen, and we all go through periods where our energy is a little bit low. I mean, we were, uh, you know, Carol and I just got home yesterday afternoon. Uh, we had, you know, business issues that had to be taken care of. And I know, Matt, you were working when you got home, too. You know, so I, I got off the plane at like 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon, literally worked an eight, nine-hour day uh, before I went to bed. And then, there, you know, life happens, right? And sometimes we're thinking, man, I'd love to take the day off. Didn't happen. Not going to happen anytime soon. Um, and so I literally have low energy today, and yet I have this huge mountain of work in front of me. How does a person, you know, overcome that? 
vague you question, I, but I'm throwing it at you. That is a real life situation that all of us, all of people, you know, people ask me all the time, are you always this energetic? Do you always have this much energy? You know, in truth, probably 95% of the time, yes, I do. And, uh, you know, there are times, Mike, that I don't care how much you juice, how much you run, how positive you think, how much you smile. You know, I don't, I don't care if you play I the Tiger. I don't care if you play I will survive. I don't care if you play just beat it. I mean, I'm telling you, my friends, the bottom line is, is that, you know, it's, it's, it's not, there's going to be times you have low energy. Your body has to rest. I'm not, it's just all there is to it. Your body is out of gas. It's out of fuel. It's, it's run down. It needs a break. Uh, so having said that, I will say this. If there's times when you have low energy, legitimately low energy, but you've got to stay in the hustle. I've learned this, that, uh, those that are in motion stay in motion. You know, when you when you tend to sit still, it goes down. You know, but when you keep moving, uh, you tend to you tend to really uh, there's something about the energy will it'll come in waves. It'll pick back up, believe it or not. Uh, but but you know, let me give you some practical things to do because, like I said, I mean sometimes the only answer whether you, whether you can do it or not is to rest. Now, it might only be a 30-minute rest. It might only be a two-hour rest. It might only be, you know, uh, three hours. I don't know. It might only be a half a day. But whatever you do in that little bit of time, you got to make sure you really rest. The phone's got to go off. You got to not think about anything. You've got to really chill. You got to let your mind rest. You got to, even if you got, you know, I recommend playing small, uh, some, some soothing music. Uh, maybe just relaxing, relaxing your spirit, your mind, your body. Uh, but Mike, of course, you know, the only other option during that season is, uh, push, push through it, push through it hard, you know, just really stay moving, get out of your, get out of your, uh, sometimes you might have to get up and splash water in your face. You might have to, you know, you might have to, uh, go for a fast sprint, not even a long run, just a sprint down the road and back. You know, you might have to, uh, um, you know, you might have to just, you know, turn on as many lights as you can, make sure the windows are open, uh, play some upbeat music. I mean, there's just little things, obviously, Mike, but at the end of the day, right. there really is no easy answer other than this is the, this is the raw reality. If you're low energy and you need to keep going, you've got to just go and just push through it. You got to just. But move the body. That's the key. Move the body every 30 minutes. Move the body every hour. You know, take five, 10 minutes, get the body moving, get, drink ice cold water. Keep drinking ice cold water. That's the key in those situations. I'm gonna try that. I noticed something, and this is, uh, this is a setup for you, but I noticed you didn't mention energy drinks. Yeah, I really <laughs> didn't. And I would never take an energy drink no matter how bad I needed it. I really wouldn't. Uh, because, you know, yeah. I think that actually that's only a temporary fix because most right. of the times you'll actually, it'll have the opposite effect. You'll go really high, but your crash is, you'll go low. And then it, it then it, your body needs another one. And Mike, I just, I would not, <laughs> you know, even in a situation yeah. where I would need massive energy it would be my absolute last, 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 last resort because I believe I can get energy from other places. I would rather drink straight up ginseng, you know, uh, than do a do an energy drink. You know, I would rather I would rather just go do the ice bucket challenge. Just say, you know what, dump this big old bucket of ice water in my face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Hey, a uh, couple of things quick. I love what you said about moving, get yourself moving. Uh, I want to talk in just a second about music because that's, I'll sometimes just pick up the guitar and strum it a few times and it energizes me. Um, but there's just some small things you mentioned. Get your body moving, short nap, you know, listen to some music, drink cold water. Those are quick, easy, practical things to do. And uh, I just, I, I was laughing because Al says he takes 10 minute naps. Of course, we're big advocates of the 11 minute nap. Al says we're oversleeping by a minute. So, <laughs> Al, 
which I thought was funny. Uh, Al's throwing me and Carol said, his chocolate covered cigarettes here. <laughs> hey, what? I didn't see that. Something about organic chocolate equals organic cigarettes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I see what hey, you're saying. Music is important. And I like that, Mike. You know, I do little things. I really do. I do little things throughout my day. I have little practices that I do. And I like that one of yours is strumming the guitar. You know, that picks up your energy. You know, sometimes um, for me, it's, it's, it's blasting. I have really massively upbeat playlists. I mean, and I'll turn it loud. You know, I'll, get, I'll do crazy dances. You want me to show you one? You guys want me to show you one of my crazy dances right now? Well, I'm I'm yes, man, yeah, I yeah. I really need energy. Yes. Dude, time out. Is Sonya and Tommy, work, are they moving today? Uh, is it today? I know they're moving uh, by the end of the month. Major props for a couple that brought their two kids to a missions trip oh, we, right before they're moving. Major props. Mike, it was good meeting It you. was. The Turners are, yes. are, are, we always thought they were awesome on Fuel for Success. But after meeting them in person, wow, they got some really good kids, man. We got to work out yeah. Sonia. Yeah, line. great folks. We're going to have to, you know, Tom <laughs> pulled us aside and asked us to kind of straighten her out. And we we told him we would. So, no, they're awesome people. We That's have totally of not true. What's that? Yeah, it was good. Uh, you're right. I said you're exactly right. Wonderful people. It's so cool to, you know, kind of get to know them on the show and then meet them in person, face to face, give them a hug, say hi, and hang out and serve with them all weekend. It was just a, just a wonderful thing. Um, Al says folk music energizes me. A little more specific, bluegrass and old time mountain music do energize me. Because how can you listen to bluegrass and not be happy? I mean, all that banjo, you got to be happy. Dude, I love, love that style of music. I mean, I almost would never need a nap if I listened to that all day, my friend. Uh, Hannah's recommending an app called Radio Tunes. I'm going to check that out, Hannah. I appreciate the uh, uh, suggestion. I tried uh, I tried Apple Radio. Radio Tunes. Radio Tunes. I, I use Pandora quite a bit when I'm – yeah, she said it's a mobile app. Because um, I use I use Pandora quite a bit when I'm working out because the the – you know, it's Wi-Fi, so I can uh, I can do that. I've used uh, Apple Radio, but uh, of all the stuff that Apple executes well, Apple Maps and Apple Radio are like the worst. They should just, I mean, they have a third of the cash in the in the U.S. They should just buy Pandora and buy Google Maps and like use those. Oh, I agree, I, Mike. Or even if they didn't buy Google Maps, they should find a way to integrate. I don't think Google would sell it to Apple. They might, but listen to this. Dude, I would almost rather use the good old Randy McNally. Is that what it's called? The good old, remember the old man McNally. we pulled out in the car that was like this big and we had it like laid across the whole front seat and we're like trying to like, where did Maps go? That's almost better than Apple Maps. Uh, it is. I love, I love Maps, like physical Maps. I, I kind of actually miss using them. Uh, sometimes when we do a road trip, we'll get we'll get an atlas anyways, just because it's so easy to see like where you're at, even though you can like zoom, pinch zoom out, you know, like like I can. It's, it's just not the same. As one, your, as one of your tightest friends, I can see you loving using a map. It would drive me up the wall. I couldn't do it, of course. I, I'm so I'm so into the GPS. But listen, just as a tip, if you use Siri and say directions to you know Tampa Bay Stadium. That's going to come through Apple Maps. Anytime you use Siri right. for directions or you use, say, Yelp, and you'll say get directions, you've always got to copy and paste the address and put it into Google Maps. Trust us. Mike, tell them why Google Maps is better. Uh, it will get you to where you're going without, <laughs> like, all kinds of weird detours. Like, go down this road. A mile, then make a U-turn and come back a mile, and then turn right back on the road you were on. Wait, what? That's the way it was Sunday morning. Remember? Hey, um, it had Tommy said he, he needed a circle. I mean, literally, it had us go like. And you know what else it did? It sent us. Okay, you ready? We were looking for a Starbucks, 
A Starbucks was a block behind us. It sent us up the road, <laughs> around right. the corner, around another corner, around another. <laughs> we were like, we were right there. We could have walked to it. We, you know, but that's it was a half a block behind us, and the GPS took us on a seven-minute drive to get there. Yeah, which wasn't Google Maps. That was Apple Maps for you. Google Maps. Apple Maps. Said, oh yeah, hang a Yui here. Boom, you're there. Google Maps would have said, "Turn around." Yeah, Google Maps would have said, "Get out of your car and walk." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. How did we get on this? What in the world? We're talking about life coaching, motivation. Hey, these are good life coaching tips. You know what? Using the wrong technology can cause frustration in your life. It can cause you to And you don't frustration. need more frustration. Don't confess how many of us have thrown phones before. Anybody else? I did it yesterday. You just launched your phone across the room? I did it yesterday. Threw, threw it across the office. Did it break? That's even worse. No. Like sometimes you want, no. I don't know if I just throw it over, you know, maybe against the couch. You know, it's, safe. it's not going to break, right? But then there's that moment where you miss and then it breaks. <laughs> I've never done yeah. that, by the way. Thank you. I have a <laughs> phone, but I've never broke it. <clears throat> yeah, I have carpeting everywhere, so I just sort of tossed it and it landed gently. Um, it needed to be tossed, though. Sometimes your phone just needs to be thrown. Tweet that. What are we even talking about? Okay, so, um, hey, here's a question that came in, which is great. Uh, and um, one of the things that, you know, uh, I'm in a, in a in, and you're helping me. My, uh, oh, yeah, it was actually Carol's phone that I threw. It had nothing to do with Carol. It had, had to do with the person that was on the phone. You're awake. You should call me out, Carol. Carol Appreciate that. You're watching. Why didn't you just call your husband out right out on live air here, my friend? <laughs> uh, Tommy says he's looking forward to the day he has enough uh, money that he can just destroy his electronics at will. Um, I, you know, I was I was fortunate to be at the end of a company moving out of a facility one time a few years ago that I worked for, and there were like all these PCs that we had to get rid of. And so they brought up this big, you know, they backed in one of those huge dumpsters. And I got to take these PCs and smash them into the dumpster. Might have been one of the best days of my life. Dude, that's fun right there, isn't it? <laughs> Sonia's calling out Tommy. Tommy threw his trumpet. Mike, you know we what? Should, there, like, there's a, let's talk about anger management right now. I'm feeling like we got talk about that. that need some help with their rages. Yeah, let's let's talk about that anger management. I mean, you know, we're talking about destroying electronics and throwing things. Uh, it's probably not a good thing, honestly. Hey, um, let me ask you this. So, uh, from a uh, it's kind of a kind of a different question, but we've got about seven minutes left here, and I'm going to jump to this uh, this question, one that came in. Mike, and uh, Mike, you know, let you, letting you yeah. know, just letting you know, it's our show. If you want to jump to the next question, you can, my friend. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Moral support. I just, moral support. I just don't want you to get mad at the next question and throw your computer. That's all. Just easing it up a little bit, my friends. I would. I would throw my paper. Um, so actually I, I don't want to, because this has all my to-do list stuff on it. So. Yeah. And by the way, Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike, okay. There's people that have a temper. Mike, Mike has no temper guys. I mean, literally he doesn't. I I've been around him. The guy doesn't get mad. I mean, he might get frustrated, but he does. He, he doesn't get mad. It's like the Bible says, God anger only endures for a moment. So some of you are in good shape. God was only mad at you for a minute. You're off the hook. <laughs> That's what I preach Sunday morning. You're off the hook. Relax. You're forgiven. Off the hook. Anyways, Mike, let's, let's, let's go to the next question, my friend. And I'm glad about it. Um, and I noticed that Carol's not on right now, or she'd probably disagree with you about my uh, temper. So she'd call me right out. She'd be like, oh, no, he gets mad. Um, so what was the question? Hey, here's a totally different topic. 
I almost feel like we should like change something, like a different show. It's episode 214A. Uh, how does lack of taking responsibility and making excuses sabotage our success? It's a great question. Dude, it's probably the number one lesson I'm trying to build into my son's life. After our missions trip, we got home yesterday, we had time for a 30 minute walk. The entire 30 minute walk was about this very topic right here. It was about me telling him, Caleb, under no circumstances, make excuses about anything. Always take responsibility, even if you're in the wrong, or even not if, when you're in the wrong, the worst thing that you can do is try to make an excuse. When you take full responsibility, people respect you. It causes you to have more success. It causes you to have deeper levels of character. But whenever you start making excuses, then, you know, I'll be honest with you. It really, truly, I told him, I said, you know, I'll give you an example. I said, you know, uh, he had a situation and it's just a personal growth. All of us had where he was. He was forgetting maybe his workbook at school or whatever. And, sure. you know, and again, he, he was, he was, he was tending to make an excuse about it. I said, no, 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 listen, that doesn't fly. There's, there's no excuse. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to overcome the forgetfulness. And I said, Caleb, listen, you have got to learn to write things down. And I said, if you can just start getting into the habit of writing things down, you won't have to worry about trying to remember. That's why the average millionaire still carries a legal pad. And I told him, always have something that you can write, so, or you can use your notes on your iPhone. So it led into this conversation of, uh, and he loved it. He's like, okay, dad. He's like, I said, so let's practice. And I gave him different scenarios. And I said, so tell me how you would respond. And I'll tell you if that's a taking the full responsibility response or if it's an excuse making response. And, you know, I said, for example, you know, um, you know, let's say uh, he was playing. He was playing a video game with Travis and it was very intense. It was a football game. And the guy yeah. dropped the pass and, and he ended up losing the game. He's like, if that guy would have oh, caught the pass, I would. I said, no, no, listen, see, even that. Believe it or not, even with a little video game, don't allow yourself to say it. Just say, you know what? Good game. I got you next time. Don't ever allow yourself to blame a referee, an umpire. This carries over into every area of your life. That's good. You know what I mean? And I said, so mm -hmm. even in the small areas, don't even allow yourself to blame or to make an excuse. Just take responsibility. Just own it. Own it, man. If you mess up, own it. If you if you blew it, own it. Just say I blew it. You know, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. You know, today's a new day. Take responsibility and move forward. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in a world of making excuses. What about you? You know, Matt. Like? The the <clears throat> I was just gonna say that the 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 path to improvement, right? And if we want to be successful, I mean, really. That means self-improvement. We need to find ways to improve ourselves. We need to improve the things that we're doing in our life to achieve success. Because if you just keep doing it the way you've been doing it, it's not going to change. And uh, in order to improve, right, there's a process of, of doing, evaluating, and changing. And if you do things and you make excuses, you never get to that evaluation stage. And so those excuses block true evaluation. And so you're nev never able to get to the place where you take your evaluation and say, okay, now I can truly evaluate where I'm at and then figure out what I need to do to improve and then start the cycle again. And, you, you know, and then you start the cycle again. You, you know, you're, you're in the midst of whatever it is, and then you need to have true and effective evaluation so that you can improve once again and start that cycle and start that cycle. Every time those excuses that victim mentality, that complaining, it blocks that true evaluation. It doesn't allow you to clearly see the objective truth of what's happening. So good, Mike, and I've learned this. I've learned that when you're when you're honest and upfront <coughs> and about success or failure, taking responsibility, giving responsibility, you know. A lot of times people like to take responsibility for success when it wasn't even theirs to take responsibility yeah. for. 
whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? True. I might have had a few people do that to us, Mike. You know, some of our training and our techniques and our teachings, they took responsibility for it, all right. <laughs> but it wasn't theirs to take right. responsibility. So, you know, take responsibility for the good and the bad. Just don't take responsibility for stuff that you're not supposed to take responsibility for. Yeah. Just be authentic about it. And Sonia's asking if it's if it's prideful to not take uh, take the res responsibility and accept blame for blame for situations. Uh, my personal take is yes, pride can enter into it, but I think it's even more than that. Uh, sometimes people just you know they they there's there's a victim thinking, and then there's like entitlement thinking, and both of those will prevent you from from being objective about your evaluation and begin to make excuses. Let me throw this out there, and this is probably a Thursday or Friday show, but we'll close with <laughs> this. Let me tell you what I believe, and very few people have the type of character or uh, maturity to do this. I don't believe in throwing other people under the bus. I believe, case in point, Mike and I are in a partnership. Let's say he blew it. I'm not going to put the responsibility off on him. I'm going to say, you know what, I'm sorry we, we didn't handle that like we should have. You know, I'm not going to say, well, you know, yeah. I sent that to Mike, and he must not have responded. Like that, my friends, is bad. It's it's bad. I mean, you know, people, that is bad. wives do this with their kids. They blame the parent. You know, we blame, we, you know, and, and it's, you know what? True friends, true relationships, they, they don't, they, they protect. They don't, you know, blame. Let's say on a missions trip, someone was supposed to, to, to pick up, you know, maybe let's say we, we got a staff, you know, let's say one staff member was supposed to pick up the, the 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 waters the bottles of water and let's say they didn't pick it up like I asked right well wouldn't be good for for so and so to say well you know what they didn't do it you know I told them they needed to do it but they didn't do it like true people will take the hit for the whole team with the team you know meaning like um, you know let's say I'll give one more example let's say let's say um, Let's say something was really riding on, you know, in our business, something that I was supposed to do or Mike was supposed to do. We wouldn't blame another, you know, in other words, we're good at doing that. You know, it's like I see it in sports on my son's baseball team. I see it in business. I see it in the church. You know, I see people easily pushing off the. Cause they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to, you know, I don't know how to, I hope y'all know what I mean. You know what I mean? Do you need more analogies, Mike? Maybe you give it an analogy. <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, look, let's say, let's say I send a document over to Matt to review and then uh, a customer came back to me two days later and said, Hey, where's that document? And I hadn't gotten it back from Matt. I'm not going to like throw him under the bus and say, well, I don't know. I sent it to Matt. Yeah. That's right? my point. Not at all. I'm going to be like, you know what? Let me check on that. I'm not really sure. And then we'll, we, you know, execute and do all of that. So I think that's what you're trying to say. I, I think it's funny too. You also uh, Sonya's under conviction for about what the trumpet calling out Tommy, oh, calling out Tommy <laughs> the trumpet. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like this. It'd be like you know, let's say let's <clears throat> say the coach told a kid on my son's baseball team to get the baseballs, and the kid didn't do it. Right? I would know my son was mature if he would just he knew his teammate didn't get the balls. Right. Rather than letting his teammate suffer, right, it would be classy and I would want my son to just go ahead and get him, take it, drop him off, and yeah. be quiet about it. Don't go up to the coach and yes. say, yeah, you know, I know you told, you know, Scotty to get these balls, but he didn't do it. If I saw that in my son, I would be mad. I would say, Caleb, that is not the way you handle business. You protect your teammates. You cover for each other. You say, hey, I, hey. Scotty, I got your back. I know you forgot the balls. And you don't tell coach you got them. And you sure in the world don't tell coach, hey, coach, you know, Scotty forgot the balls. You get what, you get what I'm saying? Right. That's how you need to yeah. be. <clears throat> That's a little thing we call class right there. <clears throat> Having class in your activities and your actions. <laughs> Good point. <clears throat> this Excuse me. Spouses too. Woo! Yeah. Talk about X's for 50 shows. <laughs> we could do 50 Fridays on X's, my friends. <laughs> X everything. X employees, X best friends, X wives, X husbands, X mother-in-laws, <laughs> X it all. But anyway, 
That's what makes life beautiful. You want that you, you you know you don't want life to be perfect. Are you kidding? You know how boring life would be if everything was just perfect. Well, it's what we all want. We we think we want it, but then we get bored. I mean, I, I'm I'm thankful for a little bit of challenge, a little bit of trouble, a little bit of difficulty, or whatever. Mike, we're five minutes over time, but it's our show. Oh, we're sorry about yesterday. Mike, for one of the first times in 214 episodes, we weren't able to do our show yesterday. We we had a travel day and we had a business thing we had to take care of. It literally couldn't take 30 minutes out, but we're here today. We're back tomorrow at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Looking forward to uh, working with all of you. Thank you so much. And uh, you guys all enjoy your day today. Go take full responsibility. Go get moving. Have fun. Uh, keep it light. Uh, don't make excuses. Don't blame others. And uh, just live your life, my friends. Live your life. Put a smile on your face. Don't take things for granted. Appreciate the show, Matt. I'm already higher in energy, so uh, you've helped me. Appreciate it. God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Love you all.